So, hello, Gail. It's lovely to see you again. How hey, are you well, doing? How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm doing good, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like inspired today because a lot of the things that I've been through in my life, I've realised just how, um, what's the word I'm looking for? How grateful I am for those experiences now that I've been through those experiences. I think I spent a lot of my life looking at how things have gone wrong and thinking, why me? But it's only now as I'm getting older and I'm working with more children, more families, that I'm realising that though if I hadn't been through those experiences and learned the techniques I did, I wouldn't have nothing to share, would I? Absolutely. Yeah. And so my message just today... As much from, the, uh, from the, the awful things as we can from the successful. Yeah, absolutely. So I think my message today is everything you've been through is for a reason. You know, it is a gift that you can share with somebody else. Mm. Yeah. What happens often, though, is we get to a point where our mind is just so, so busy. And I'm, I don't know about you, Gail. Do you have moments in your day where your mind just feels cluttered and you can't oh, concentrate? Yeah, absolutely. You just yeah. want to shut the world out? It's overload, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. If you were a, if you were a computer, you'd defrag yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's on my list. Definitely on my list this week. You frag your own head. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, and actually that's a good comparison because, you know, that is my next job. Someone helped me to take loads of stuff out of my computer the other day to put on a hard drive. But with our mind, we don't necessarily do that, do we? Oh, no. But what I've actually found along the way, someone's um, presented me with a couple of really, really easy little techniques that we could use. And what I want to do today is to share them so that people can use them for themselves. Mm. OK, so we're going to pretend today. I'm sure your mind's not busy today, is it? No, it's having a day. Uh, the little cogs are going steadily today. They're not racing about today. Excellent. OK, so we're going to pretend this is a busy day. OK. OK, because I could make, you know, I can make use of some space in my head at the moment. I think. Oh, we can all have a moment to just take a moment, can't we? It's good yeah. for us. It's good for us. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is a little technique which is natural. And it's to help shut out the world. So when maybe there's a lot of thing going on or you've had a busy day at school or at work or college or wherever you've been, and your mind is just full of everything that's happening. And to go to the next thing just feels like a step too much. Mm. Maybe you've got to go home and cook dinner or maybe you've got to go home and do some homework. But the thought of just starting something new is just an overload. Okay. And I call it my shutting the, shutting the world out technique. And I use this sometimes at bedtime. Sometimes I use it if I wake up in the night and I'm not sleeping very well. Or during the daytime, if ever, I find myself thinking, thinking, thinking too much or my head feels like it's aching. And what I'd like to do, Gail, is just share this with you at the moment. And maybe we'll do it together. And then okay. you'll tell me if it, if it helps today or maybe how we can change that to help other people. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So if you take your hands, okay, and remember, if you have thoughts come into your mind, that's natural. Your mind is actually meant to be processing this stuff all the time because it's how it helps you to survive. All right. But sometimes we need to slow it down a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you take your hands, your, just your hands, that's all you need, and just place them gently over your eyes so your heel of your hand here is on. I've got to take my glasses off as on your cheekbones okay and put them your hands over your eyes like that yes okay and your fingertips are just touching kind of around your hairline yep and breathe so breathing in and letting go and breathing in and letting go and it's often not until so we get into this space that we realise just how tense maybe your shoulders are. So mm. maybe just, you know, for the moment, just moving the shoulders around and just sitting back more comfortably in the chair. Just letting your shoulders drop. Just keeping your hands there on your eyes and gently breathing. It might not have to be big purposeful breaths at the moment, but you're just breathing in. And letting go. And just breathing in. And a deep sigh out. <sighs> breathing in. 
and letting out. And just notice if you've got any tension in your body and just maybe adjust your body a little bit, getting comfortable. Just can you continue to breathe in and letting out. And I've got to take my hands off for a moment because I want to talk to you, but hold your hands there for a while, for as long as you need. And often what happens when we're stressed, we tend to breathe really shallow into just our chest. Mm. And then the oxygen is flowing from our chest to our head. Yeah. And often far too rapidly. So it's not having time to process into the bottom of your body and then come up. It actually just goes from there to there. And this is often a trigger for anxiety and stress. And if we're in that shallow breathing, what will happen when something happens outside of us, which triggers us to feel more stressed, it becomes panic, a deeper anxiety. And I can feel it myself as I'm thinking, oh, <coughs> you know, you get that coffee feeling, that almost feeling like you've been strangled in your throat, your chest is, your heart is going. Okay. So if ever you're feeling that, just go straight to that feeling. <sighs> I'm going to shut the well out. And it's okay to shallow breathe at the beginning. Don't try and change anything too rapidly. Okay, but as you're sitting here with your eyes covered, just gently keeping your eyes covered for the moment. Okay, so holding that feeling of just calm and peace as you breathe. Just holding that space. And then take your breath so that now, instead of just breathing into your chest, you're breathing deeper down into your stomach. And imagine your tummy is blowing out like a balloon as you breathe into your tummy. And let it down. Breathing into your stomach. And letting go. Breathing in. Holding it for a moment and letting go. Maybe you could say gentle words like, I'm safe to breathe in, to hold and to let go. And just let that flow, flow, just like a gentle river or stream, just flowing down and up. Just gently breathing down and up. And if you want to say words like I'm feeling calmer now, and I'm feeling peace, I'm feeling calm, and I'm feeling peace. And if thoughts pop in your head and they're starting to stress you out, they worry you, just notice them where your hairline is and still holding your hands there, just gently starting to tap on your forehead like a piano keyboard. Gently tapping under the hairline because this is your stress release point. Just gently tapping. So breathing into that stress, Maybe even saying out loud how you feel. So, oh, that makes me feel really worried or angry or frustrated. However you want to express it, speak it out when you're tapping that hairline. And let it go. If you're really angry about something or something's really bothering you, say it out loud. So I'm really angry and this is making me feel angry. Say it as if you're talking to that person. You're putting those thoughts out of your body directing out to the universe, to that person, and releasing from your body. And when you've expressed what you need to do, you just hold that space and I am free to breathe in, calm. I'm free to hold this peace and I'm free to let go. Feeling free to breathe in peace. You're moving your body to allow that freshness, that peace to come into every cell of your body. And let it go. 
If another thought comes in, just de-stress, express how you feel. And let it go. The more you actually respect your feelings and let them come up and release them, you're honoring what you're feeling. You're increasing your value. You bring comfort to yourself and you bring a massive sense of relief. And when you feel ready, you just gently take your fingers away from your eyes, come back, just send thank you to yourself. You gently move your fingers and your toes, stretching out your body and coming back into the room. And if you've got some water there, and I should have said that before, bring water with you. Just take a sip of water and feel that water just gently going through your body. Just notice the sensation of the water going past your lips, down your throat, down through your chest and into your tummy. And let it go. Whoa. Let it go. Just get back in your physical body. All right. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Excellent. Well I, I found that I was better off saying the things in the head rather than saying them out loud yeah. as an alternative. But yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Well done. Love. And you know, each person's differently, especially if you're not used to speaking your feelings, doing it in your head can be released. But if you've been holding those feelings for a long while, speaking them out in a quiet, privileged space, you know, private space, actually is a release from all areas of your body. Because sometimes we hold the anger, frustration, guilt, shame, whatever it is, oh, lower down in our body. So well, by talking it out. Time. Yeah, for a long time sometimes, isn't it? And yeah. sometimes it's not even our guilt and shame to, to hold, is it? No, absolutely. And, you know, this is just a general technique which will help somebody if they're feeling like, oh, I just can't cope with one more thing. I just need to shut the world out. It can help with stress, anxiety, panic, overwhelm. Mm -hmm. If you can't concentrate. If you've got something that on your chest and you just got explode with that feeling, that emotion that you're feeling, just shut it down for a while and speak it out. Mm, and then when you go to approach the subject or you go into the next step of your, your day, you're in a much calmer space to deal with it. You're producing the healing chemicals, the serotonin, the endorphins, which actually then help you to flow into the day as opposed to go in with chaos. Yeah, I think it could work. And you've always got, you know, you've got all the things and the tools you need with you, haven't you, all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not Absolutely. just you go out and buy something specialist to do it with. Yeah. You've got all the kit you need with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have got the ability to heal ourselves. Mm. It's just, how, where do we start? And, you know, that was the idea of... Like any journey, when you start off, it can feel very overwhelming, can't it? Yeah. If you excuse me for one moment, I'm just going to get something. Where is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because if anyone's looking for some more self-help tips, I've actually written a book which is full of self-help tips. It's a good it's... book. Thank you, Gail. <laughs> Thank you. It's full of ideas. Of simplify your life one step at a time. You know, how to empty your house. Don't wait to be perfect. You know, use a remedy. Drink more water. Very simple, natural things that you can do every day. And there's pictures in there. Give yourself a hug. And then we'd look at how you can understand the past and how it's impacted on you. And we also look at how the bark flower remedies can actually help you turn things around. So, you know, just gentle tips. So, you know, if you want to help yourself, it's available as an ebook or as a paperback. There are not lots of natural ways you can help yourself. And if not, get in touch with us and we'll work it through together. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing, Gail, today. And okay. what I'd like to do now is, um, if we could come back a little bit later, and maybe we'll do another one, which for, if you find it hard to concentrate or your mind is stuck in that logic. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to uh, close this down for a moment. I'm still working on technology, so I'm learning something new today. I'm going to just pause this for a while. Oh, no, I'm going to maybe stop it and see what happens. See you, you next time. Okay. <laughs> So thank you, Gail. So I uh, finished a bit abruptly there, didn't I? This is what happens sometimes when you're trying to do something new. It feels a bit foreign, doesn't it? And it's okay. 
Thank you, Gail. And I'll speak to you in a little while. Thank you. Bye.